I'm a footprints volunteer and today I'll be reading Bartholomew and the Ublek by Dr. Seuss. They still talk about it in the kingdom of Din as the year the king got angry with the sky. And they still talk about the boy, Bartholomew Cubans. If it hadn't been for Bartholomew Cubans, the king in that sky would have wrecked that little kingdom. Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before, but that year when his majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew Cubans just didn't know what to make of it. Yet all that year, the old king did it. All year long, he stared up into the sky above his kingdom, muttering and sputtering through his royal whiskers. <laughs> that thing that comes down from the sky. All spring when the rain come down, he growled at that. All summer when the sunshine came down, he growled at that. All autumn when the fall came down, he growled at that. And that winter when the snow came, he started shouting, the snow, this fog, the sunshine, this rain, bah, these four things that come down from my sky. But King Derwin Bartholomew tried to calm him. You always had these four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year, the same four things. I'm mighty tired of these old things. I want something new to come down. Something new come down, Bartholomew gasped. That's impossible, your majesty. You just can't have it. Boy, don't you dare tell me what I can and cannot have. Remember, Bartholomew, I am king. I know, sire, said Bartholomew. You rule all the land and you rule all the people and even the kings can't rule the sky. Can't, huh? His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe other kings can't do it, but maybe I'm the one king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew Cubans, I will have something come down. But how to get something new to come down? That was rather hard to think up, and for many days the old king stomped around trying to figure out some way to do it. Then finally, late one night, when all the lords and ladies of the palace were fast asleep, just as the king was buttoning his royal neck shirt, he suddenly stopped still. A strange, wild light began to shine in his gray-green eyes. Why, of course, he began laughing. They can do it for me. Bartholomew Cubans, blow my secret whistle. Quick, call my royal magicians. Your magicians, dear master, see. Bartholomew shivered. Oh, no, your majesty, don't call them. Hold your tongue, Bartholomew. You do as I command. Blow my secret whistle. Yes, sire, Bartholomew bowed, but your majesty, I still think that you may be very sorry. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast on the king's back secret stairway. And a moment later, he heard them coming up, up from their musty hole beneath the dungeon, up the empty midnight tunnel to the royal bedchamber tower, came the magicians on their padded, shuffling feet. Up and right into the room, they came chanting, shuffle, duffle, muscle, muff, fist of wisdom, mist cuff. We are men of groans and howls, mystic men who eat bored owls. Tell us what you wish, O king, or magic can do anything. I wish, spoke the king, to have you make something fall from the skies that no other kingdom has ever had before. What can you do? What will you make? For a moment they stood, thinking, blinking, their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word. Ublek. Ublek, asked the king. What will it look like? Won't look like rain. Won't look like snow. Won't look like fog. That's all we know. We just can't tell you any more. We've never made Ublek before. They bowed, they started towards the door. We go to our secret cave on Mystic Mountain Nikotave, where all night long we work for you and we'll make hap and we'll and you'll have Oblek when we're through. They'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty. Stop them. Stop them? Not for a ton of diamonds, chuckled the king. Why, I'll be the mightiest man that ever lived. Just think of it. Tomorrow I'm gonna have Oblek. It took Bartholomew a long time to get excited king to sleep that night but there was no sleep for bartholomew the page boy all night long he stood in the king's window staring out at the mystic mountain nikotave somewhere up there bartholomew knew the magicians were working up their terrible magic all night long the magicians did all night long they walked circles around their magic fire making magic mumblings with their clicking tongues oh snow and rain are not enough oh we must make some brand new stuff so feed the fire with wet mouse hair, burn an onion, burn a chair, burn a whisker from your chin and burn a long sour lizard skin, burn yellow twigs and r burn red rust and burn a stocking full of dust. Make magic smoke green thick and hot. It sure smells dreadful, does it not? That means the smoke is now just right so quick before the day gets light. Go magic smoke, go high, go high, go rise into the kingdom sky. Go make the oobleck tumble down on every street in every town. Go make the wondrous oobleks fall or oh, bring down oobleck on us all. Dawn was just breaking and Bartholomew was still standing, trembling, watching as the bedchamber window. But now as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians hadn't done a thing. 
Then suddenly Bartholomew Cuban stopped smiling. Was he saying things? No, there was something strange up in the sky. At first it seemed like a little greenish cloud, but a wisp of greenish steam. But now it was coming closer, lower, down towards the fields and farms and houses of the sleeping little kingdom. It was swirling around the topmost turrets of the palace. Tiny little green specks were shimmering in the air. Queer little greenish blobs, just about the size of a grape seed. He stretched out his hand and he started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There's something frightening about these globs. Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty. Your oobleck is falling. The king sprang out of his royal bed sheets. But my royal whiskers, it is. Oh, that beautiful oobleck. It's mine. All mine. I don't like the look of those blobs, sire, said Bartholomew. They're coming down as big as greenish peanuts. They're bigger, the better laughed the king. Oh, what a day. I'm going to make it a holiday. I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance in my glorious oobleck. Out in that stealth, asked Bartholomew. Do you really think it's safe, sire? Stop asking foolish questions, snapped the king. Boy, you run to my royal bell tower. Wake my royal bell ringer. Tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew Cubans didn't move. Run, barked the king. Bartholomew ran. Across the sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran, then up the ladder out of the high bell tower, he climbed to the bell ringer's little cubby hole in the belfry. Ring your bell, he called. His Majesty the King proclaims today a holiday. The old man called out of his cot. He grabbed the bell rope. What's the holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, said Bartholomew. He yanked it harder on the ringer of the bell. Still, nothing happened. Huh? What's wrong with my bell, he murmured. I'd better take a look inside. He poked his head out through the little trap door merciful jake gracious he gulped what is that all over my bell like greenish molasses not only your bell bartholomew cried look at that poor robin down there in the tree she's stuck to her nest she can't move a wing that ooh looks gooey it's gummy it's like glue Ugh! the bell ringer wrung his hands if that green stuff sticks up robins it'll stick up people too someone's got to warn the people cried bartholomew got to wake them up and warn them to stay inside their houses out to the royal trumpeteer he shouted he turned and slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder to the trumpeteer's tower raced bartholomew cubans and on up the stairs four stairs at a time as he ran up he could hear the plop plop of the oobleck on the window pane it was pelting against the palace well as big as green cupcakes he yanked the covers off the snoring trumpeteers he showed his cold he shoved his cold trumpet right into his sleeping hands Get up, warn the people, blow the alarm. Alarm, yelled the trumpeteer. Then his eyes saw the oob like, those green things, Bartholomew, where'd they come from? The king, panted Bartholomew, his royal magicians made them. The royal trumpeteer leapt from his bed. That king of ours should be ashamed. He jabbed his trumpet out of the window. I'll blow, he shouted, the loudest alarm that's ever been heard in the kingdom of dead. But all the royal trumpeteer blew was a glug. My horn, he gulped. One of those green things flew inside it. He tried to blow it out. He couldn't blow it out. He tried to shake it out. He couldn't shake it out. I'll get it somehow, he yelled. I'll put it out. No, shouted Bartholomew. Don't you touch it. The trumpeteer's hands was already in it. His fingers grabbed hold of the lump of oobleck. He could feel it squiggle around in a fist like a slippery, slippery potato dumpling made of rubber. He pulled with all his might. The oobleck began to stretch. Then, gong, the oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. He yanked his arm back with it right up to the elbow. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeteer wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, Bartholomew, what'll I do? I don't know, and I hate to leave you to your horn, but if you can't warn the people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. Out of the room and down the stairs, Bartholomew Cubans ran, down to the chambers of the captain of the guards. The captain was humming in front of his mirror, combing the ends of his handsome moustache. Captain, do something, shouted Bartholomew. Do something? Why? smiled the captain. What's wrong? Captain, I mean, you seen the dreadful oobleck? It's coming down as big as greenish baseballs. Oh, that stuff, laughed the captain. What's so dreadful about that, lad? I know I think it's rather, you know, I think it's rather pretty. Captain, pleaded Bartholomew, it's dangerous. Nonsense, snorted the captain. Lad, are you trying to frighten me? Captain, my boys are afraid of nothing. That stuff's harmless. I'll show you, I'll eat some. Eat some, gasped Bartholomew, no. But before Bartholomew could stop him, the captain was leaning out through his window, scooping up some oobleck on the end of his sword. Don't, captain, don't. The captain did. By the time Bartholomew dragged him back inside the room, his mouth was glued tight shut with oobleck. He tried to speak, but no words came out. All the noble captain of the guards could do was blow a lot of little sticky greenish bubbles. 
Forgive me for leaving you, Captain, said Bartholomew, but a captain full of bubbles is no help at all. Bartholomew stretched the poor man out. He left him there on his chamber floor. Bartholomew went, tearing through a zigzag palace hallway. I'll get the king's horse. I'll ride through the county. I'll warn the people of the kingdom myself. He pushed open the door that led out to the royal stables. Bartholomew stopped. He could go no further. The awful Ublek was plummeting down as big greenish footballs now, too late to warn the people of the kingdom. Outside the palace, it was piling up great greenish tons of Ublek deeper and deeper on every roof of the land. There was nothing Bartholomew Cubans could do out there. Shaking his head sadly, he stepped back inside. But inside, a moment later, it was just as bad as out. With an angry roar, the Ublek was suddenly hitting the palace harder. Like a sinking sailboat, the whole palace was springing lakes. The Ublek was ripping the windows right off their hinges. It was dripping through the ceilings. It was rolling down the chimneys. It was coming in everywhere, even in the keyholes. From every bedroom in the palace came the house of lord and ladies. Frightened in their nightgowns, they came jumping to their doors. Go back to your beds. Get under your blankets, Bartholomew Cubans went crying through the halls. But nobody paid the slightest attention. Everyone in the palace started rushing madly about. The royal cook rushed down to the royal kitchen. Bartholomew Cubans saw him trapped there, stuck to three stew pots, a teacup, and a cat. The royal laundress rushed outside to save her laundry. Bartholomew saw her stuck tight to the clothesline between two woolen stockings and the king's best Sunday blouse. He even saw the royal fiddlers. They were stuck to the royal fiddles. Everywhere Bartholomew ran, he saw someone stuck to something. They were stuck up by the dozen. Every last friend he had in the world was flopping and floundering all hopelessly caught in the goo. Then suddenly, amidst the hubbub, Bartholomew gasped. The king. Where was the king? He'd forgotten all about him. It was in the throne room that Bartholomew found him. There he sat, old King Derwin, proud and mighty ruler of the kingdom of Did, trembling, shaking, helpless as a baby. His royal crown was stuck to his royal head. The seat of his royal pants were stuck to his royal throne. Ublek was dripping from his royal eyebrows. It was oozing into his royal ears. Fetch my magicians, Bartholomew, he commanded. Make them say some magic words. Make them stop the Ublek falling. Bartholomew shrugged his shoulders. I can't fetch them, your majesty. Their cave is on Mount Nikotave. It's buried under Ublek. Then I must think of some magic words, groaned the king. Oh, what are those words my magicians say? Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff? That's all I can remember, and they don't do any good. The Ublet keeps falling harder. Bartholomew Cubans could hold his tongue no longer. And it's going to keep falling, he shouted, until your whole great marble palace tumbles down. So don't waste your time saying foolish magic words. You ought to be saying some plain simple words. Simple words? What do you mean simple, boy? I mean, said Bartholomew, this is all your fault. Now the least you can do is say the simple words, I'm sorry. No one had ever talked to the king like this before. What, he bellowed, me? Me? Say I'm sorry? Kings never say I'm sorry. and I'm the mightiest king in the world. Bartholomew looked the king square in the eye. You may be a mighty king, he said, but you're sitting in Ublek up to your chin. And so is everyone else in your land. And if you won't even say you're sorry, you're no sort of a king at all. Bartholomew Cubans turned his back. He started for the throne room door. Then Bartholomew heard a great deep sob. The old king was crying. Come back, Bartholomew Cubans. You're right. It is all my fault. And I am sorry. Oh, Bartholomew, Bartholomew I'm awfully, awfully sorry. And the moment the king spoke these words, something happened. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, I'm sorry. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, it's all my fault. Maybe there was and maybe there wasn't. But they say that all they say that as soon as the old king spoke, the sun began to shine and fight its way through the storm. They say that the falling ublek blobs grew smaller and smaller and smaller. They say that all the ublek that was stuck on all the people and on all the animals of the kingdom of Did just simply quietly melted away. And then they say Bartholomew took the old king by the sleeve and led him up the steps of the high bell tower. He put the bell rope in his majesty's royal hands and the king himself rang the holiday bell. Then the king proclaimed a brand new national holiday in honor of the four perfect things that come down from the sky. The king now knew that these four old fashioned things, the rain, the sunshine, the fog and the snow were good enough for any king in all the world, especially for him, old King Derwin of Did.